Howdy folks, it's Tim. I'm back with another video review. This time I'm covering Nightcore's MT-06. So before we get into this review, this flashlight was actually sponsored by Through Night and not Nightcore. The reason for that is because they wanted me to do a head-on comparison between their new TI-4 versus the MT-06. I think initially they actually wanted the Streamlight, but I figured it was kind of a little odd matchup, so I suggested the MT-06, and when they looked at it, they're like, oh yeah, cool, it is a better matchup. So anyway, that's where we are. The MT-06 came on this little cardboard box, their typical standard black and yellow coloring style, plastic case, two spare O-rings, the instruction manual, the warranty card. Even though they sponsored this, I purchased it from a Amazon store called Lumen Tactical, and they threw in this little keychain light as well. Although on here it says Longhorn Tactical, so I think they are somehow related, but anyways. So just to cover off on some quick facts of this light, it's a two AAA sized pen light that can run off of either nickel metal hydrides or off of um, standard alkaline cells. Now they also do warn against using LiFePo batteries as well as rechargeable, meaning 10440s or in this case they list the 10400, so that exceeds the standard voltage range, so that's not covered. But Really quickly, there's two output modes on this light. There's a high at 165 lumens within the low of 32 lumens, and those run at 45 minutes and five hours and 15 minutes respectively. Shoots a beam out to 92 meters. It's got a peak beam intensity of 2120 candela. Drop impact resistance to one and a half meters. And what I actually found interesting was it's actually IPX8 two meters, not just waterproof and submersible. The pen light does utilize Cree's XQE emitter, which actually came out, I think, roughly two years ago to little or almost no fanfare whatsoever. I mean, just do a Google search on it. You know, it's probably very little articles. I guess people weren't overly excited about the performance potential, even though they did shrink the overall die size. Now, by way of comparison here, you can see the XPG2 emitter on the left side. That's inside of the Through Night Archer 1C. In the middle, you have Through Night's TI featuring an XPE emitter. And then finally, you have the XQE emitter that's been squeezed into the new MT-06. If I am not mistaken, Google Fu will yield probably, I think, just the MT-06 currently that's using this emitter. I mean, if you know of any others, by all means, throw into the comments. But it's a... Uh, Interesting emitter to throw in here because of the fact that it is a very, very tiny size. So given the overall form factor of this, I think it works out quite well, especially since they coupled it with a smooth reflector. So this should give the MT-06 still some decent punch, although perhaps not too floody. By way of comparison, here is a XPL emitter inside of Through Night's nice TI. And as you can see, that's pretty large. I mean, that's almost XML neighborhood size-wise, right? And the reason why I like this so much, especially for indoor carriers, is because it just gives a very, very nice floody beam, which I actually prefer indoors. Now, outdoors, yes, I may actually prefer a little bit more throw, but so far indoors, I've really, really liked this. Getting back into the MT-06, and in consideration of, like, okay, who would actually find pen lights useful, right? So typically, you figure if you're going to carry a light, especially um, for your EDC, one may opt to carry, you know, I mean, there's so many form factors. There's a single AAA, there's your single 16340 size lights, your double A's, and I think that this actually falls into a stranger category, right? Perhaps one that enthusiasts won't really use. So I guess because of the form factor, you have two AAA cells, and let's just say even if you use Eneloop's nickel metal hydrides, they're what, 800 milliamps each, so that's 2.4 volts times 0.8 because of the fact that these are in series, so that yields 1.92 watt hours, which isn't a whole lot. In consideration of that, you get more than that out of a single AA, which in the case of Eneloop would be 1.2 volts times 2 amp hours equals 2.4 watt hours. So, to me, again, it's a very uh, niche case, in my opinion, at least. I think those who would like a um, pen light would probably be those in either the auto mechanic field or perhaps dentists, your IT guys crawling under the desk, checking PCs and whatnot. I mean, again, it, to me, I don't know, personally, it's not been high on my list in terms of the form factors. I've always been like a 16340 or 18650, even though that's not really EDC size, but those are my favorite form factors, again, just because of the output level and energy density. However, though, we are now in a state where pretty much, you know, every light that I could think of, or at least I should say, the enthusiast lights, they really just put out more output than we will ever truly need, right? So even in this case, the high is 165 lumens and the low is 32 lumens. I mean, unless like say you were, you know, 
in the some tunnel even the 165 with dark adaptive eyes would still be pretty decent although of course then it becomes a matter of you know how far of a beam do you need and how wide of a beam profile but again in terms of just the sheer output for daily tasks and why one would, might need a pen light for I think it's way more than sufficient now in consideration of course like I said I'm thinking about the use case of a pen light I really think that what would have made this light even much more useful would have been a third output level, which is like a Firefly mode. I mean, that would have really, really put the icing on the cake. But as it is, those two levels are well spaced out. Now, the battery is inserted this way through the head. When you remove it, you'll see that they've actually placed a physical reverse battery polarity protection. So pretty much if you insert the positive tip down on the flat side against here, it will not be able to make contact with the positive point there. So it has physical reverse battery protection. Now the thread is anodized, so it allows you to lock out the light with quick twist and pairing beneath it, although that's a little difficult to make out. There is a spring at the bottom end to complete the circuit path. Now the tail cap does offer a decently firm resistance so I don't feel like one can accidentally operate it but again as I had previously mentioned you could easily lock it out at the head so that you cannot accidentally activate it at all. In terms of fit and finish I mean again I have never really had much qualms with Nikkor lights although I have read certain instances where they've had quality issues but to me personally out of the products I've owned I've had one issue with TM26 which I sent back because one LED died they replaced it and they sent back a, I guess, refurb model. That's the one that I mentioned was a little weird one where the OLED display showed it was the new 3800 lumens, but yet it still had the uh, original XML emitters pumping out 3500 lumens. So, but anyway, I digress. Getting back into the light itself, one thing that I thought was a little peculiar was just the fact that the head doesn't actually twist back on flush. It leaves a gap there. That to me is interesting because of the fact of the two meter water resistance so I don't know if that impacts it in any way, but I just thought that that was a curious implementation as to why they didn't just make it, you know, fit flush. It's not that they're incapable of it, right? They certainly are. They're masters of machining, you know, designing these fancy grooves and whatnot. And in case in point, I mean, look at this end. This retaining cap here can actually be removed to give you access to the metal tail cap button, as well as the rubber cover protecting the mechanical reverse clicky right there. So I suppose if you could find, I guess, a rubber glow-in-the-dark button or whatnot big enough in this size, you could potentially replace that and, I don't know, maybe have additional waterproofing. And you would also reduce the chances of this metal and metal grinding, right? I think that was a huge issue with the Sunway Man V11R lights when they first released a addition with the metal tail cap switch. Now, I actually haven't been able to remove the actual tail cap in. I guess my hands are too slippery and this thing is very, very smooth. So, but I don't know, maybe I'll try to find a small rubber wrench to get this off because otherwise I can't imagine how else did they attach it, right? This is a solid ring for the stainless steel clip. I'll probably get back to that in the future. I mean, overall, the quality ostensibly seems very nice. Who knows how it'll hold up in the long run, but like I said, I've had great experiences with Nikkor's products, so no qualms to complain about so far, other than, like I said, perhaps that little, you know, gap there, but it's not the end of the world. Wrapping up on the quality-wise, the laser engraving is all done very nice and sharp with no blotchiness. And everything is all very nicely polished and fully deburred. There is no, um, Although maybe perhaps right here, these corners are slightly sharp, but overall, like I said, everything else at, at least this end is all nice and smooth and deburred. Now size wise, I don't really have much in the way of modern lights to compare to. Like I said, I just not a huge fan of the tripway form factor, but for what it's worth, I still have my ancient two tripway size mag light here. And then this one, I, I really honestly can't recall where I picked this up from. But anyway, it's got imprinted on it, Kershaw Light Gear. And to be honest with you, I didn't even know that they made lights. So, because I'm not a knife fan, I do hear that name mentioned amongst knife enthusiasts. But this one actually is a two AAA size light. Again, probably has that same mag-like bulb in there. But unfortunately, it doesn't work. Maybe one of these days, I'll look for one of those upgrades where for the mag lights to see if I could get this up and running again. But... 
Bottom line is again, until the through night TI4 arrives, I really just don't have a modern competitor. But for what it's worth, in the single AAA size light, you have through nice TI Christmas edition, their TIS, and Phoenix L0D. This is one of my very first and only AAA size light for quite a while. I believe I actually do still have the Maglite Solitaire somewhere. It's got to be, I don't know, in one of the boxes. But one of the things I loved about that was just this cool. I forgot who used it as their little signature at the bottom, but they quoted someone saying, you know, the Maglite Solitaire as bright as a single match or candle and with the requisite runtime as well. So pretty hilarious, but unfortunately very apt. And for those who did not grow up on Maglice, man, I gotta say, you guys are spoiled, man. You're in a day and age where you just have a ton of great choices in terms of LED lights. Now, handling-wise, I mean, being that it's so skinny and small, one really shouldn't have much issues with it. Like I said, it's not the size of a pen, perhaps a very, very thick pen. I mean, you could probably even do uh, one of those flips with it, right? Probably remember this from your high school days. I don't know. I don't really do it too much anymore, but anyway... Because of the smooth body, it doesn't offer the greatest grip, but because it is long enough and has these two grooves here on either end, that kind of gives it a little bit, you know, tact so it doesn't easily slip out of your hands. If you're a mechanic, perhaps not the greatest choice because of the, f the ultra smooth finish, especially if your hands are greasy and whatnot. But overall, one really shouldn't have much difficulty in handling this light. Incidentally, it carries the same thread pitch size as the Phoenix L0D, thus allowing me to attach the head, although not necessarily being able to operate it, but it kind of gives you an idea of what perhaps a single cell MT-06 might, be, might look like. So perhaps like an MT-04 or MT-05, whatever the nomenclature might be. In terms of portability, the steel clip has just enough tension where, you know, it clips onto things without too much issues, provided it's reasonably thin. But it also does have sufficient clamping force so that it doesn't, you know, really slip loose. Of course, this is a smooth material, so that comes on and off very easily. Plus, it's very, very thin. But clip it onto something thicker like that, and it pretty much stays in place, as you can see there. For your more traditional pen, dedicated pen holders, it's a tight fit. I mean, again, this is a large, probably, you know, very, very thick pen size. So, but with a little bit of struggle, it does get in there and it's pretty permanent, it's not coming out. So the diameter of the head is about 14 millimeters. That's roughly uh, a little over half an inch thick. And that's roughly the same size on this end for the tail cap as well. So because of that, for your more traditional pen holders, hose, it is a little tough fit, but it will fit at least the majority of them. I mean, I can't speak for every single bag out there, but at least for this one, this is a Coach Messenger bag. It does fit here reasonably well. Now, this one's an Ogio. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but Messenger bag. And this one would be a challenge. Okay, there. Got it. And this one's a Tumi bag that has a generous size for the pen holder, so fits in easily. As I had covered earlier, the switch does have sufficient tension that I feel accidental activation, while it's not impossible, I would say it's not, I shouldn't be too easy. Again, not to say that it's impossible, but I feel that for the most part, as long as you don't really press on it hard, it shouldn't easily turn back on. So just to play it safe, it wouldn't hurt to just lock out the light with a quick twist of the head during transport. Now in a shirt, this is pretty much how it would look. It's, I mean, this is a standard size dress shirt. Obviously pockets would vary from shirt to shirt, but it does fit, although, I don't know, is that a fashion faux pas nowadays? I don't know, I personally wouldn't do it, but if you want, this is how it would look like. For jeans, if you slide it to the edge and you sit down, for me personally, it's not too long, so I feel like it doesn't create any issues with, you know, just shoving it into your pocket, sitting down, you kind of almost forget that it's there, since it is slim enough. And no, that was not caused by the light, that was just there. <laughs> Likewise, slipping into the back pocket, unless you have an unusually huge butt, it shouldn't be an issue there as well. <laughs>
And no offense to those with big butts, because as they say, I like big butts. Just kidding. In terms of the UI, there is actually no memory mode. The light will always turn on in low mode. And then with a half press, you could go into high mode. Now, if you shut it off, you wait more than two seconds, it'll default back to low mode. Likewise, if you want to change the mode, it has to be done within two seconds. So let's just say you're in the low mode, shut off the light. If you wait longer than two seconds, it'll come back on in low mode. But if you had done that immediately, it would turn back on into high mode. Now, I actually think that that makes sense because, again, thinking about the use cases of why one would need a pen light, I like the fact and the idea that it would come on in low mode first, so that way you don't accidentally blind yourself with whatever you're shining at. Now, another interesting fact is that because of the way that the light is designed, right, you have a physical switch at the end, but because you have the head that you could actually twist or lock out, you could almost use it in a twisty way if you were carrying it underhanded and you want to change the light output without switching it to the back or you know doing like a cigar grip, which in case you just really don't have much um, leverage here. At least my fingers are just barely strong enough. I mean, it would take a lot of force, but anyway, getting back to what I was mentioning is that you could kind of use it like a twisty light to change the output mode. Now, in terms of the beam profile, as I had mentioned, this is a very tiny emitter within a reasonably deep in consideration of the emitter size smooth reflector. It gives it actually a pretty decent throwy beam profile. Now, by comparison, here's through Nice TI with that giant XPL 4 emitter. And as you can see, it just has a much floodier beam profile. Slightly wider beam angle, but the center hotspot is vastly different. So the MT-06 has pretty sharp cutoffs all around, as you can see, that very nice tight hot spot, and even the outer beam profile, you can see it has a pretty strong cutoff. Whereas this has a more obscure you know, transition between the hot spot to even the outer edge of the beam is not so sharply cut off. So in closing, as I had disclaimed, again, I'm not a huge fan of the AAA size form factor, although I did have pretty fun experience with the reviews of the Pelican 1910 and 1920 lights. 1910 was a single size uh, double uh, trip way and the 1920 was a two times trip way. Those also featured clicky switches as well, which I much prefer over twisty lights. So my thoughts on the MT-06 is that it's a very nifty light. It's got a decent amount going for it. Although one major thing, like I said, I would have liked to have seen is that third level, which is like a Firefly or a even lower mode than the low mode. I don't have any qualms about, say, the finish, you know, short of, as I previously highlighted, that little gap there. But in terms of the durability, fit and finish, it's outstanding. I don't have any issues there at all. Versatile. I do envision myself carrying this more often now, especially I've been doing a lot of upgrades on my church computers and a lot of the times it's in the multimedia production room so we have the lights out so it's very very handy to have something like this that I could easily slip into perhaps like a back pocket or a shirt pocket or whatever and not be too intrusive in terms of the overall bulk. I'll hold my additional thoughts until I get the TI-4. But for now, I gotta say it's a pretty nice light and it's beginning to change my mind, especially given what I've seen of the output that one can get on two AAAs. Wow, you know, like it's, again, probably I'm beating a dead horse here, but man, we are really in an age where we just have a lot of versatility, especially in terms of high output lights. So great job, Nikor. Your challenger awaits and I'll probably be getting the TI-4 by next week. For full disclosure, the Nightcore MT-06 was provided by Thru-Night for review. Again, that's not a mistake. It was sponsored by Thru-Night in anticipation of a matchup versus their TI-4 Lite. Hey folks, as previously mentioned, I would love to expand my channel, but could definitely use a little bit more support. So if you want to see more videos like these, please like, subscribe, and share. Thanks so much.